Three disturbing true ice cream truck stories by Mr. Nightmare. What's good? How your day going? How your morning? Your evening? Your night? Whenever you're watching this video, I'm not about to talk your ears off. Don't even worry about that. We about to jump right to the video. See what's going on with this ice cream truck, man. Or these ice cream trucks. Or these nuts. Either way it go, you want to check out the original video. The link will be in the description below. But let's go. Cream truck at night look creepy. Growing up in the suburbs, one thing I always enjoyed in the summertime was the ice cream truck, specifically Mr. Softy. As a very little kid, anytime I'd hear the song of the Mr. Softy truck echoing through the streets, I'd beg my mom for a few dollars and run outside to wave down the truck. I remember one of the first times I was ever left home alone. I was, I think, seven years old. My mom was away somewhere and my dad was off that day. He apparently entrusted me to be home alone for a few minutes while he ran to the store. He was definitely the less responsible parent. I was in the living room watching Spongebob, I'm pretty sure, when I heard the familiar sound of the Mr. Softy tune outside. I rushed to the kitchen and climbed onto a chair to reach the little basket on the ledge that usually had stray dollars and coins inside. I grabbed a dollar bill and some coins. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, obviously. I ran outside to the street and waved the truck down just in time. It pulled over, and the oldish man came to the window asking what I wanted. When I asked for a specialty cone, he told me I was a little short with the money I had. I believe I told him I didn't have any more money because my parents weren't home. I distinctly remember him asking me, You're home alone? As if he were confirming it. I said yes, and he started acting all friendly and understanding. He told me to come into the truck so that I could make my own ice cream cone. I stepped into the truck, and the man went and shut the door. He told me to help myself to whatever ice cream I wanted. He said he was going to show me how to be an ice cream man, and he went to the driver's seat of the truck and started driving us somewhere. My young, innocent self thought this was all super exciting as I was pouring soft serve ice cream into a cone. But I finished that cone and then started wondering where we were going as we had been driving for a while. I went to the front of the truck to ask him, and he asked me in a more stern voice than he'd been speaking in to please go stay in the back of the truck. I listened to him. My appetite for more ice cream was suddenly gone as I got more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We went from a busy main road to a quiet residential road. At some point, I noticed the ice cream truck's music wasn't playing, and he was driving rather fast. The truck finally stopped in front of some abandoned looking building, and he asked me to come follow him outside to the building. But not before we heard a tapping on the door of the truck. I heard a familiar, concerned voice yelling through the crack of the door. The man opened the door, and my neighbor Margie walked oh. into the truck. She saw me and came to grab me by the arm and pull me out of the truck. She told me to wait in her car while she ran back to yell at the man. <laughs> she won't mow. I was extremely confused at first. The man in the ice cream truck sped off down the street. This was a time before cell phones. She couldn't just call 911 right away. She ran to the nearest house. At first I was confused, but obviously I know now she was asking for the owner's phone. She called 911, and I'm sure she reported a suspicious ice cream truck and attempted kidnapping. I don't remember the rest, except telling Margie my story, her driving me home to be greeted by my dad and cop cars, and then being told to go inside after telling a couple police officers what happened. The exact ice cream truck was found. I'm not sure how they did it. Maybe by investigating street camera footage and getting the plate number. I was made to confirm the driver was in fact the man who took me into the truck. He was sentenced to prison, that's all my parents told me. I don't think they know his name. Either that or they didn't want to give it to me. Definitely not a memory I like thinking back on. Shit, I bet, because if it wasn't for Margie. AG. Yeah, because if it wasn't for Margie, that could have went hella bad. Thank goodness she saw it, because I was wondering at one point, like, yo, he's he's lived to tell the tale, so where the hell did the saving part come in? I thought Dad maybe was just coming home and saw it happen, but not Margie did. Pops wild, gonna run to the store to get some damn backwoods. Definitely not a memory I like thinking Kid, what's your doggy bomb? Let me get a honey pack. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> oh shit. Up until I was 28, I used to live with my parents in Camden, Maine, 
a rural boat town. They were hardly ever home because of work and just traveling a lot, so I'd hold down the fort a lot. My parents' property is large and private, so when they weren't home, I'd often throw little parties. This was one of those nights. I had maybe 15 to 20 people over, and we all hung out in the backyard. It started around 6 p.m., and people started leaving around 11 p.m. By midnight, everyone was gone, and I was absolutely shot from a mixture of having been in the sun most of the day and then drinking since around 6. I changed and got into bed. Before I could even fall asleep, though, I heard something one would not expect to hear this late at night. It was the sound of an ice cream truck, only it was a tune I'd never heard before, a kind of creepy sounding one. The tune got louder until it seemed to be right outside. I lay there waiting a minute or two for it to go away, but when it didn't, I finally got up and went to the window to look outside. I couldn't see anything from my bedroom window, so I went downstairs and looked out the living room window. I could vaguely see what had to be an ice cream truck out on the lawn. My heart started pounding the inside of my chest. Who was it? Why were they here? What did they want? <clears throat> I paced around the living room for a bit, not knowing whether to call the police or my dad, or just <laughs> simply wait for them to leave. The awful tune of the ice cream truck didn't stop though, it grew sickening. I ended up finally snapping and going out the front door to the porch. There I could more clearly see the ice cream truck parked on our property, like a little less than a hundred feet away from the porch. It was parked on the grass. And it wasn't exactly a typical looking ice cream truck. It was like a white van with ice cream pictures stamped or painted on. It was a mix of confused and worried, mostly worried. Saying it was an abnormal sight would be a gross understatement. I stepped onto the grass with my bare feet and walked just a little closer to the van. The headlights weren't on, so when I got close enough, I saw there was no one in the driver's seat. When I got even closer, I saw one of the sliding doors on the side was open. I suddenly felt as though I could be jumped at any second. I looked around me in a panic, and then ran back inside the house and locked the door. Now I did call 911 and I asked them to please hurry. The woman asked me to walk around the house and check to make sure everything was locked. I started from the main floor and worked down to the den to the back door, and the glass panel on the back door was shattered. It was unlocked and opened. I whispered this to the 911 operator, even though I was truly freaking out inside. She told me to go to a room with a lockable door and wait there until officers arrived. So I tiptoed to the nearest bathroom and locked the door. The operator told me to stay on the line and be quiet. A few moments later, someone on the other side of the door tried turning the doorknob. Then they banged on the door three times. The woman on the phone said quietly that she heard it and for me to remain quiet and calm. Then I heard the back door to the house slam shut, and half a minute later, the tune of the ice cream truck slowly faded away as the van was driven off. I told the woman, but she said to wait until officers arrived. They took a I'm wondering if it was someone from the party who just knew, like, yeah, Doggy Bone got paid, so we about to rob him. Because, I mean, 20 people, that's a good amount of people. And I don't know, you probably do know them all, but I don't think nobody know that many people personally to that level. So I feel like, yeah, it was some mutuals there. People talk. Like you said, y'all got, they got their own land type shit. Boats and everything. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I told the woman, but she said to wait until officers arrived. They took a disgustingly long time to arrive. I was waiting in that bathroom for another five minutes. If they arrived in a timely manner, they could have caught whoever was at my parents' house. Instead, all that happened was I got a police report. My personal theory is the ice cream truck tune was supposed to be a distraction or something, while one of the people in it broke into the house. As I'm sure there were more than one Why person Why you go left. get a damn soft serve? Why would you go out there at night? That's creepy as hell. 10 o'clock, let me get a strawberry shortcake and a taco taco. <laughs> Something while one of the people in it broke into the house, as I'm sure there were more than one person in that van. I'm happy this happened to me when I was 23. I'm sure there were more than one person in that van. I'm happy this happened to me when I was 23 and not, say, 10 years old, because that would have traumatized me. I'm happy this happened to me when I was 23 and not, say, 10 years old, because that would have traumatized me. <laughs> the 
This happened a long time ago. I was in the sixth grade. People used to call me Jimmy until around high school. There was this ice cream truck that would always drive down my block once a day in the warmer months. The driver got to know me on a more personal level. He knew my name and I knew his, Bernard. I'd go outside for ice cream so often that he'd slow down or sometimes even stop for a minute in front of my house waiting for me to come outside, knowing I was a frequent customer. Damn, Anytime I'd buy ice cream, ice cream eat, from nigga. his truck, I'd always get knowing I was a frequent customer. Anytime I'd buy ice cream from his truck, I'd always get the same Oreo ice cream cup. He'd always stop and talk to me for a few minutes, and sometimes he'd give me free ice cream. There was this one Friday though, and I remember it was a Friday because it was the start of the weekend that my parents were going away. On this Friday, Bernard once again passed my house, and it was one of the days that I went outside to buy from him. On this day though, he gave it to me for free again, and because of that I stuck around and chatted with him for a while. He asked me how things were going and whatnot, and I told him I was excited to have the house to myself for the weekend. He was surprised that I would have the house to myself at such a young age. He said I was lucky and to enjoy. Then he drove off, and the truck eventually disappeared along with the music. The rest of the story is the part that you may not even believe. I stayed up late in my room because my parents weren't home. I was playing video games on my computer when I heard the sound of Bernard's ice cream truck. It didn't start from the distance and slowly get louder. No, it literally seemed to turn on right outside my house. I went to my window and saw the truck right outside, playing the music at this late hour in the night, past midnight. It had to be Bernard, but what was he doing? The music suddenly stopped and the truck's lights turned off. I opened my window a crack just to listen for what might be going on. Just the sound of crickets until I saw Bernard appear from the darkness, quickly approaching my window, yelling Jimmy. He stopped when his face basically banged into my window, and he started telling me to come outside. He told me I could get all the free ice cream I wanted, but the way he was speaking, he seemed off. He seemed like he was on something. His movements were spastic and sporadic. He then tried pulling my window further open aggressively, and I screamed and yanked it closed. He started knocking on the window, and I screamed and begged him to leave or I'm calling the cops. When I said that, he turned around and ran back to his truck. The lights turned back on and he drove off into the night without the music playing. I was so scared I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to call my parents, and I was scared to call the cops. I just locked my bedroom door and tried to go to sleep, but it was a long night before I fell asleep. Bernard never returned to my block after that. But any time I'd hear an ice cream truck passing by, I'd get paranoid it was him. Bernard, real ass. Get your ass on, Bernard. I ain't gonna lie, though. It's been a minute since I had one of them cockeyed ass Sonics, though. Them mugs be here. Especially that, that Tweety Bird. Man, that little lazy eye motherfucker be so good. I'm like. <laughs> nah, I just get like ice cream sandwiches and shit. Nah, but hey, I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here. Thank goodness no one got hurt. That first story, man. That one definitely grabbed me, though. I ain't gonna lie. Thank goodness the neighbor was on them heels. Hey, I'm about to get out of here and enjoy my get out of here and enjoy my day. You do the same thing. Enjoy your day, your morning, your evening, your night. Whenever you're watching this video, click that like button for me. I appreciate you, doggy bone. But I'm out.